This is going to be 6.2 continuing with some applications. So applications of the substitution rule. So basically similar applications to uh, section 6.1 just with that substitution rule now being used for the integration. So example 5 from the text says annual sales of bottled spring water for pets can be modeled by the logistic function Okay, so annual sales. Annual sales, that's a rate of sales per year. S of T is equal to 3,000 times E raised to the 0 0.5 T over 3 plus E to the 0 0.5 T. And this is millions of gallons this is measured in million gallons per year. Million gallons of water per year. And the bounds on our range are, or our domain, sorry, our domain is 0 to 12. <coughs> and t is, yeah, t is time in years, and t equals 0 corresponds to the year 2000 the year 2000. Okay, now this is an annual sales, so it's measuring millions of gallons per year. It's a rate. It's a rate. And they want, in part A, an expression for the total amount uh, sold since 2000. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going from annual sales, so a rate of sales per year, to total sales, that's going to be the operation of integration, going from a rate of sales to total sales. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to call total sales capital S of T, capital S. So instead of little s, we'll use capital S. <clears throat> that means then that capital S of t is equal to the integral of little s of t dt. All right, because to get from uh, from annual sales, which is what we have, to total sales, you integrate the annual sales. Okay. So we're going to integrate, with respect to t, that's why it's dt, we're going to integrate 3000 e to the 0 0.5 t over 3 plus e to the 0 0.5 t dt. Okay, so this is where we're definitely going to need substitution here. Now we have some options, right? We could let u be just the thing up in the exponent but then we'd still have this big denominator. I think the best thing to do, and again, there's no hard and fast rules for this, but to me the best thing to do is when you have a denominator, try letting u be that entire denominator. <clears throat> okay, that way this whole denominator will go away. Now, what would the derivative of u with respect to t b. So I'm running through the substitution method right now. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, the derivative of this with respect to t, well the 3 will go away because it's a constant and it's attached by addition so it goes away. And then this will just be 0 0.5 times e to the 0 0.5 t by the chain rule. The derivative of the outer with respect to the inner is just e to the 0 0.5 t. Then times the derivative of the inner and the derivative of this inner function is 0 0.5. Okay. Now, remember, what we do is we solve for dt so that we solve this for dt so that we can then replace this dt. dt will be equal to, basically, we'll multiply by dt over here and then divide by this entire thing. There we go. And now I'm ready to rewrite 
in this integral as 3,000 times e to the 0 0.5t all over u, right, because its entire denominator is u. dt is du over, and these are attached by multiplication, 0 0.5e to the 0 0.5t. You see how these will cancel. And I'm not writing dt here. And I'm not going to write dt at the back because I replaced dt with this. So now I'm going to end up with, um, on the outside, the constants on the outside is 3,000 over 0 0.5. And then integral of 1 over u du. Because the 0 0.5 is out here and these two e functions canceled each other. So the only thing that's left is this u in the denominator and the du, which is up top. Alright, so that's going to give me... Uh, 3,000 over 1 half is going to be 6,000. Then, um, integral of 1 over u du is the same as u to the negative 1, or integral of u to the negative 1, right? That's just exponent rules there. But that's that special form with ln, right? So now taking the integral, integral of uh, a variable to the negative 1 is the same as ln of the absolute value of that variable. And there, plus my constant of integration. And then finally, 6,000, well not finally yet, but almost finally, ln <coughs> of u, which is 3 plus e to the 0 0.5t, and then plus c. Alright, so so far I'm at uh, capital S of T is equal to 6,000 times ln of absolute value of 3 plus e to the 0 0.5t, and then plus my constant of integration. <coughs> now, a couple things to note here. First of all, we got to find this c. But, uh... Yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay, finding C. Now, in the problem, they told us that T equals 0 corresponds to 2,000, because they said T is time in years since the start of 2,000, so that implies that the time equal to 0 is the year 2,000. And they also say, in part A, Find an expression for the total amount of bottled spring water for pets sold since the start of 2000. So they don't want us to measure anything prior to 2000. They want us to start at zero, zero output for sales at year 2000. So we are... Assuming sales are at zero in the year 2000, which corresponds to t equals zero. So, so that means that s of zero, when time is zero, sales are also zero. Okay. What does that mean for C? That means that 0, S of T, equal to 0, is equal to 6,000 times ln of 3 plus e to the 0 0.5 times 0, right? T is 0. T is 0. Plus C. Okay. Now, what happens here? e to the 0, because 0 0.5 times 0 is 0, right? e to the 0 is 1, so I'm getting ln of 4. Okay. <clears throat> so c, then, is going to be equal to, just subtract this whole thing over, negative 6,000 ln of 4. 
by the way, can drop the absolute values because 4 is already positive, right? So if it's just a number in there and it's positive, you can just drop the absolute values. In fact, I'm going to say something about the actual function itself and the absolute values in just a moment. But first, we found C. <clears throat> so our full function is sales at time t is equal to 6,000 times ln of 3 plus e to the 0 0.5t minus 6,000 ln of 4. Notice here I also dropped the absolute values Why? Because this thing inside the ln function is always positive. E raised to stuff is always positive. As long as we're not negating E or taking stuff away from E, like the 3 is not negative or anything like that, this will always be positive. The graph of E is always above the x-axis, unless you, you know, reflect it over the x-axis or subtract stuff from it to bring it down or whatever, but, okay. So there we go, there's part A. Right. Part B says... How much bottled spring water for pets was sold from the start of 2005 to the start of 2008? We want to know sales from Well, we have the sales function We have the sales function right here and we want to know the sales from 2005 to 2008. Uh, now, t equals 0 corresponds to 2000, so this is going to correspond to 5 and 8. We want to know the sales from in the range of these uh, years. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the sales at 8 and subtract the sales from year 5. That's what we're going to do here. So S of 8 is, so this, this whole thing will be equal to 6,000 times ln of 3 plus e to the 0 0.5 times 8 minus 6,000 ln of 4. <coughs> and then minus... Hmm, 6,000 ln of 3 plus e to the 0 0.5 times 5 minus 6,000 ln of 4. Wrapping this entire s of 5 in parentheses because I'm subtracting all of this. And oh, plug it all into the calculator. And you should get, let's see, what did they get? Roughly 16 million. This is roughly 16 million. This is roughly 8 million. So the difference is not 8 million, 8,000 million gallons. Okay. Okay, well, there we go. So we've done a, a, an application like this in 6.1, going from annual sales to total sales. The only difference here is that the function needed the substitution method to be able to, to for us to be able to integrate it. I'm gonna do a homework problem going from marginal cost to regular cost or total cost. So 
Yep, 86. It says the marginal cost of producing the X box of CDs is given by that the total cost to produce two boxes is $1,000. Find the total cost function. So we're given marginal cost. I'm going to call it C prime of X because that's what we usually call marginal cost, the derivative of the cost function. And it's 10 minus X over X squared plus 1 all squared. And we're also given that total cost to produce two boxes is $1,000. So C of 2 is equal to 1000 Because uh, that's the cost to produce two boxes. Cost to produce two units. Okay, that's how we interpret this statement. Okay, we want to find C of X. Cost at X. Well, C of X is going to be equal to the integral of C prime of X. Total cost is equal to the integral of marginal cost. Okay. So we're going to integrate 10 minus x over x squared plus 1 all squared. Don't forget the dx. <coughs> I can go ahead and s split this integral. 10 dx minus x over x squared plus 1 all squared dx. I can split the integral around this subtraction. This is going to be the problem, right? This, not so much. This is easy, relatively. Okay. Uh, in fact, how should I do this? Let me go ahead and just compute this. Integral of a constant is just going to, you're just going to attach an x to it, so it's going to be 10x, there we go, and then minus this integral. Okay, so I got the first integral done. Let's focus on the second one. What should I let u be here? Probably the denominator. Probably not the entire denominator, not that square. So I have options here. I can, I can let, what I'm saying is I can let u be x squared plus 1, or I can let u be x squared plus 1 all squared. But I want to let u just be x squared plus 1 here, because then when I take the derivative of this with respect to x, I'll just get 2x. That's going to allow me to cancel this x out. If I had done all squared, uh, if I had let u be x squared plus 1 all squared, like this entire denominator, then I would have... Um, an extra x squared plus 1 floating, floating around my derivative because of the chain rule, and then I wouldn't be able to, to get rid of that. So <clears throat> this is going to be the better choice here. All right, dx is equal to uh, du over 2x. All right, now we're getting this integral is well, there's the 10x, and then minus integral of x over u squared, right? Because u is x squared plus 1, and so I've got to add that exponent of 2 right there. And then dx is du over 2x. This is all attached by multiplication. So I'm getting 10x minus 1 half of... Uh, 1 over u squared du. <clears throat> so the x's cancel, which is exactly what I needed to happen. And then I'm left with a 1 over u squared right here. And then this is a 1 half because it's a 2 in the denominator. So I just went ahead and pulled that all the way out. So now 
This is 10x minus integral of u to the negative 2 du. Right, just exponent rule. I haven't taken the integral yet. That's just exponent rules. Then that's going to be, so I just keep carrying that 10x along. Oh, I forgot the 1 half. There we go. Minus 1 half times. Now, I'm going to use the power rule on this. So I'll add 1 to the exponent. So it'll be negative 1, because I'm adding 1 to the exponent. And then I'll divide by that new exponent. So it's u to the negative 1 over negative 1. And then plus c. <clears throat> and then that's going to be 10x plus, right, negative and negative, plus 1 over 2u, right, because the 2's in the bottom, and the u, u to the negative 1, means 1 over u, so it's in the bottom, yeah, plus c. Now I've got 10x plus 1 over 2 times u, and u was x squared plus 1, and then plus c. Okay, getting there. Getting there. Now my function's all back in terms of x. Now I need to use this information. c of 2 is equal to 1,000. To f oh, to find my constant, which I really probably shouldn't have been calling c. Let's make it a k. Let's just do that and make it a k. Because I'm using c to name my function, so it just gets a little confusing. So let's just call it k. All right, so let's find k now. So what, what have I got? Where am I right now? I've got that c of x is equal to 10x plus 1 over 2 times x squared plus 1 plus some constant that we don't know yet. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Okay. We also know that c at 2 is equal to 1,000. So let's use this. That means you take 1,000, you set it equal to this function, but with a 2 plugged in. So 10 times 2 plus 1 over 2 times 10, oops, it's supposed to be 2 squared, 2 squared plus 1, and then plus k, and the point is to solve this equation for k. So a bit of algebra coming. So 1,000 is equal to 20, plus 1 over 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5, times 2 is 10. Okay. Maybe I should write this as a decibel. Oh. So 1,000 equals 20.1 plus k, because 1 tenth is just 0.1, so 20 plus 0.1 is 20.1, and then subtract that over, k equals 979.9, right, because add the 0.1, it would be 980, yeah, there we go, so now, c of x is equal to 10x plus 1 over 2 times x squared plus 1, plus 979.9. Just in case I haven't noted, uh, noted this before, this is the fixed cost. If you remember from all the way back when we were defining different parts of the cost function, this is fixed cost. The cost for producing zero items. The part of the cost function that has no variable attached to it. So whenever you're going from marginal cost to your cost function, that last step is going to be finding that fixed cost for the cost function. Because the integration doesn't tell you that. The integration just knows there's a constant there, it doesn't know what it is. That's why there has to be some kind of information like this given so that you can pin down that fixed cost for your uh, cost function. Alright, that's all I got for this uh, video.